And welcome back, Yvonne Corey, joining us now again to talk about, um, you know, the ways that we can honor our mothers for Mother's Day this weekend um, in a kind of a non-traditional way. And so you brought in your aprons once again, but here to highlight, um, you know, just the importance of mothers in general. I mean, the, the importance cannot be... <laughs> We wouldn't, we wouldn't be here without our mother. Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> that's a fair statement. Yeah. Yes, and mothers have gone through so many, so much, not only bringing us into the world, but throughout their entire life. And today, I'd like to just share some of the uh, things that mothers and grandmothers have had to go through. So mm -hmm. this little show is just a tribute to all their hard work and love that they've yes. given us. And throughout I'm sure the awesome. many people will recognize many of the patterns um, and and designs that yeah. you have brought for us. Today. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going to start with the 30s. And I think maybe when I say the 30s, people will start thinking the depression, the Great Depression and all the hardships mm -hmm. that they had to go through. And they had to <clears throat> uh, deal with not a lot of resources. And so they became very resourceful. And they used a lot of, would you believe, feed sacks. Mm -hmm. And this, as you can see, is a Hubbard feed sack. And Mankato is known for Hubbard Milling Company, so I had to bring the Hubbard feed sack. But they would take and remove the dye and then use it for cloth. Then the homemakers started talking and asking for prints. And so here's just one. This is an actual sack, the size of it. But they made uh, feed sacks with prints and patterns. Because and they so knew that uh, the mothers would be turning it into clothing or aprons or really any household item. Yes, That's so, so they used it for beddings, they used it for curtains and all you know types mm -hmm. of things. So spe awesome. speaking of aprons, here is one of those aprons. And this particular apron is made out of a feed sack but decorated a little bit with two different colors of rickrack because it was the depression probably didn't have enough of one color so mm -hmm. they added the other. But one of the things too with this particular apron that I can kind of remember is the fact that they might have worn it out to the barn mm -hmm. to get some milk, right? bring it back to the house. Or they may have taken a bucket of water out to the well mm -hmm. to get water to put in the crock in the house mm -hmm. and then use the dipper in the cup in the house to get the water out of the crock. So they didn't right. have running water. And I think what's yeah. so what's so cool about um, you know all the types of aprons that, that you brought today is you really span, you know, all the way from, you know, the Depression era all the way up to, you know, the manufactured ones. Yes. And so kind of like if we could fast forward just a little bit to, you know, the war years of World War II. So um, uh, what exactly did the aprons look like during World War II? Well, I've got one here. And basically what happened was after serving in <clears throat> the war, one of the things that the soldiers would do is bring back something for mother. And mm. it would either be an apron or sometime a pillow top. And this one particularly says, to my dear mother. Wow. And this would be the gift after serving in the armed wow. forces wow. Could for we, mom. If uh, we could oh. get a little zoom in on that oh, right there. Yes. It is yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yes. So, and just the fact that, where, do you know what this material is? It's an organza. Okay, and, and do you know where it came from? Uh, manufactured here in the United States oh, or, okay. uh, or around wow. you know, the world. Okay, wherever. that's really pretty. Yes, yeah, and decorative right. as well. Right, <clears throat> and so what else do you do? Well, <laughs> yeah. I brought all kinds of things. And, and so then, which piece do you think that you brought today is your most, um, the, the most impactful history-wise? Well, I would have to say this particular one because it's the 1950s, mm -hmm. but most of all, <clears throat> it's very fancy, um, added with the braid and so forth. But it's kind of that beginning step from the Depression into the more glorious years of the 50s and so right. forth. And that's when aprons really took a turn. They became the icon of the American homemaker. Wow. And for the advertising and so forth, the homemaker was always clad in an apron. Wow. And this particular apron just kind of reminds me of some of those ads. For and, sure. And incidentally, it's mother's dress yeah. as well. Oh my gosh, and I definitely, <laughs> I know I've seen, I'm sure Jack's gonna be the same way about um, seeing the, uh, seeing our, our great grandmothers and oh, yeah. grandmothers all the time. And stuff like that. Yes. Well, Old thank pictures. you so much, Yvonne, for joining us today. And we will be right back after the break. Stay with us.